I remember uh, going to this fortune teller machine. You stick your finger in and it's supposed to tell us who we are and what our fortune is. But I didn't want to go there because I didn't want it to come out and say, Alan, you're gay. And that was my fear. I was deep in that closet. I just knew I didn't want people to know. My name is Spirit Who Stands in Water. I am from the Cree tribe, Wolf Clan, and Two Spirit. There's this organization called International Two-Spirit Organization. It's an organization of Canadian and American Two-Spirit people. This one time they were meeting in Winnipeg and they were looking for a term to use as our identification. Because of the many tribes in North America, they didn't know what term to use. So in conclusion, they all settled using the English term two-spirit, encompassing the male spirit and the female spirit in one body. Two-spirit people have always been accepted in all First Nations prior to the arrival of the Europeans. Two-Spirit people have always been part of the community and we played an important role. As a Two-Spirit person, it is said that we are natural visionaries. We are natural seers. We are natural medicine people. I think as a two-spirit person, one of our gifts is to view things from a man's point of view, but also we have the gift to see things from a woman's point of view. We as two-spirits, Traditionally, we're able to speak as one, combining both men and women thoughts as one. I want to regain that type of talk so we can speak as one and speak as whole. In our teachings, we are all here for a purpose. We were not just put here as a disturbance. We were put here to become valued members of our society.
growing up in Countess Lake, I didn't really understand who I was. I knew I was native, and I knew we practiced things differently. All that time, I knew something was missing. I remained in a closet and I remained alone. I learned how to do things in secret. And when I came out at 30, I didn't care who knew. It was time for me to get out of my shell and come out and be happy and start living my life. This is the time that I started learning about how the spirits communicate with us. At that time, I was working at the uh, band office as a welfare worker. I was laid off because uh, there was no more money. In retrospect, I'm thinking, the government of Canada is not, not broke. But the spirits were communicating to me. And even then, I did not listen. I stayed here. I didn't know where I was supposed to go. When God talks to us, He'll talk to us in different forms. And it depends if we're, we're listening or not. And when we're not paying attention, God will speak to us so that we listen. I wasn't paying attention to what God was saying. So God basically said, okay, I'll give him a message where you have no choice but to listen. <laughs> and then one weekend, I went to go stay at my grandmother's house because my water line froze. And while at my grandmother's, someone broke into my house and burnt my house down and I lost everything. All I had was the clothes on my back. And again, God is speaking to me, but this time in much tougher medicines or harsher, harsher teachings, sort of like telling me, you're not listening to me. You must learn to listen. I'm going to take all this away for you to move on, to go where you're supposed to be. I was sitting in the car and I was thinking, you know what? It's time for me to move. So I said, I'll move to Toronto. And I remember, I've heard of St. Charles Tavern. I want to explore St. Charles Tavern because it's a gay bar. And when I went there, I went alone. Beers. I had a few drinks because I, I needed that. Lights, lights, the strobe light was on, the flashing lights, the disco ball was circling like crazy. Music was awesome. All I saw were men. And right on the spot, I started crying. And I told myself, I am home. This is where I'm supposed to be.
when I came out truly 100% in Toronto, it was liberating. I felt so uh, free. What I wasn't really taught of growing up because I missed out on all those learning years. I only judge a book by its cover. The more handsome the man, the more nice, the more nicer he will be. Not true. <laughs> you know? And that, that was my experience with uh, a couple of men. I didn't really understand what love was. It was more lusting. And at that time, I was still practicing drinking, getting drunk every weekend, living for alcohol. The reason why I drank, it's to uh, make me brave, you know. A friend of mine in, in uh, Toronto called it liquid courage. What I find strange is why did I become an alcoholic? Why did I start using drugs? I started, I started going on a wrong path. I don't know if it's wrong because each path has its teachings. The conclusion I came up with is, is because I was lost. I had no identity. So walking on this earth was confusion. I was living, but I guess not to the fullest extent that I should be living. At that time was when the spirits came to me and the spirit told me, it's time for you to go back. And I told myself, I'm going to go back home to help my people regain their culture to help my people regain their traditional ways. On my way home to Conscious Lake, it started pouring rain, so much water. And at that point in the bus, I either fainted or whatever, I was overwhelmed with something. And in my blackout, I had a vision. And in the vision was this ugly looking spirit. And it was hovering above Constance Lake, my home community. But I wasn't afraid. I was looking at it from a distance. Then uh, I got home to the reserve. I was sitting in my dad's room. There was a rack of magazines and one of them caught my eye. So flipping through the pages, I marked it, but I came across this picture. This one, I was shocked because what I saw in the vision and what I was looking at in, in the magazine was, was the exact same spirit. I started reading the article. They were mentioning something about that spirit is developed by the negative thinking of the people in your community. 
At that time, our people were going through some sort of social problems. Six of our young warriors either committed suicide or were murdered. We're struggling right now as a people. But this spirit can be taken away. We have to relearn our culture, we learn our ways. I eventually the spirit will go away, that negative thinking energy will go away. Our ceremonies and our prayers, God gave them to us. This is the way God made us to be. We all have a purpose on this earth. are not lost, they are just forgotten. God made me gay. God made me two-spirited. The more I know, the more I learn, the more impressed I am with the teachings of my people. And I want to learn as much as there is to learn so I can help the future generations to make their lives easier for them, to make it more acceptable, to make it more comfortable. And that is important for self-identification. Knowing who you are will only give you self-esteem, increased confidence, increased identity. And those are important for all of us, whether we are red, white, black, or yellow. I love to dance. I guess uh, as two spirit we had to beat. We had to rhythm naturally in us. So when I dance, I am always on beat and always on rhythm. I like my path. I enjoy my path. It is very frustrating at times, but it's an enjoyable frustration. And I always seek ways to learn and to teach. So that's, that's where we're at now. Um, I, I heard I heard one time uh, there was somebody else in our community that kind of was questioning 
his uh, masculinity. And then I heard this other person tell that person, I hope you don't turn out to be too spirited because there's enough of them. <laughs> but I, I took it as a, as in a funny way, at least it's out there. It's being discussed. It's no longer hidden and no longer not talked about. People can talk about it now. That's where we're at. And that is important. We're good. We'll end there. <laughs>